Hi, I'm here with Lindsay collins Prena, who is a lecturer in our school. She's a neuroscientist who studies healthy aging, looking at memory function, and also what happens in diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. She teaches about the anatomy of neurons and their function, and what happens in illnesses. Welcome, Lindsay. Thanks for taking the time to talk to our students. Thanks, Femke. I'm always happy to talk about neuroscience. The nervous system is comprised of two parts. The first, the central nervous system, we call the CNS for short. And the second, or peripheral nervous system, we call the PNS. Do these systems work separately? Could you explain? Sure. Well, the central nervous system, or CNS, is really important for helping to integrate information. It's made up of the brain and the spinal cord. On the other hand, the peripheral nervous system, or PNS, works like a highway, sensing information from the environment and sending it to the brain, and then taking messages from the brain and sending them out to the body. Just like on a highway, where cars will travel in one direction to go to the, the destination, and in the other direction to go away from it. These two parts have to work together in order to help your body function well. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you're sitting in your garden about to eat a gigantic piece of cake when suddenly a bee flies in. In order to know that the bee is there, the first thing that has to happen is that receptors in your eye have to take in that information and send it to your brain so you can recognize the shape and the location of the bee. At the same time, you might notice that you hear a buzzing sound around you. Your ears have to take in that information and also send it to your brain via other sensory neurons in the peripheral nervous system. Once the information reaches the brain, it's now no longer in the peripheral nervous system, now it's in the central nervous system. So if I could summarize that, I would say that your peripheral nervous system is going to be important for taking information from the environment and sending it up that highway to the brain, to the central nervous system. It's also going to have an important role when the brain later sends messages out to the rest of the body, the other lane of the highway, which we'll talk about in a little while. So what happens in a central nervous system? Well, this information will come into one part of the brain, but it'll cause lots of other parts of the brain to become activated too. For example, activity in a part of the brain called the hippocampus might help you to remember that you've had memories and experiences with bees in the past. If you've been stung before and these experiences weren't so good, then another part of the brain called the amygdala might become active. This helps you to recognize this current situation as a potential threat based upon your past experiences. So what happens next? Well, now you need to act. You need to get that bee out of here. One of the first things that has to happen is that neurons that connect to your heart and lungs will help to get everything going faster. Your heart will start to beat faster, you breathe more quickly, you might even notice that your pattern of breathing changes and becomes really shallow. This is part of what we call the fight or flight response. And it's associated with activation of a part of the peripheral nervous system, which we call the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is important because it helps you to respond to potential threats or to dangers in your environment. You are now ready to act. Now your brain has to send information to the muscles in your arm via motor neurons. Once the signal reaches muscles in the arm, you'll now be able to swipe that bee out of here. So looking at that chain of events, could you just summarize which different neurons are involved? Sure, I'm happy to. Well, basically, the way you need to think about it is that we need neurons to tell us about any changes that might be happening in the environment. In order to do this, we have to have neurons that monitor and respond to the environment. These are called sensory neurons, and they're part of the peripheral nervous system. They'll take in that environmental information and they'll send it up to the brain. Once the information is in the brain, it will get further processed and the brain will help to decide what the appropriate response will be. That response will then be sent out to muscles and to glands via the peripheral nervous system in order to help you to respond appropriately to whatever might be happening in your environment. So what do you mean by this? Well, the brain learns by trial and error, but it also tries to predict the best outcome based on previous experience that's 
experiences that you've had. Let's go back to the bee. Now that you've spotted the bee, you need to decide what you're going to do about it. There are many possible responses that you could have. You could decide that you wanted to step on the bee. You could decide that you wanted to try and catch it in your hand. Or you could decide that you want to use a fly swatter to get it out of the way and try and kill it. Your brain will use previous experiences that you've had with bees in order to help you decide what your best response might be. Okay, that's clear. But what is the role of the central nervous system? The central nervous system basically takes all of the information coming in and helps you to select and coordinate your response. Let's imagine that you decide to hit the bee with the fly swatter. Your brain will then activate the motor division of the peripheral nervous system and send signals to muscles in your arms via the motor neuron. The muscles in your arm and hand have to be activated if you're going to be able to grab that fly swatter and hit the bee. But it's not just muscles in your arm. You also need a lot of concentration to be able to hit a flying object. So that's why your brain will also activate the fight or flight response in order to make energy available to increase your heart rate, change your breathing pattern, and help you to increase your monitoring of the situation. So is this last step managed by one system? No, there are actually two different parts of the peripheral nervous system called the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. Let's start with the somatic. The word soma means body. And in fact, the somatic nervous system controls the skeletal muscles of the body. When you decide that you want to reach and pick up the fly swatter and then actually move your arm to swat the bee, that's your somatic nervous system at work. The somatic nervous system is controlling the arm muscles in order for that to happen. Now, on the other hand, the way I remember autonomic nervous system is to think of it as automatic. So autonomic equals automatic. The autonomic nervous system is important for controlling all of the muscles that you don't have voluntary control over. For example, you don't have to sit and continually think heartbeat, 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 come on breathe, let's keep breathing. Those are the sorts of muscles that are controlled by your autonomic nervous system. So your smooth muscle, your cardiac muscle, glands and adipose tissue. We can even further break down the autonomic nervous system. Remember the sympathetic nervous system that I mentioned before? The division that was really important in fight or flight response when you're in a potentially dangerous or threatening situation? Well, that's one branch of the autonomic nervous system. So when your heart starts to beat fast when you see the bee and you feel afraid that you're going to get stung, that's your sympathetic nervous system at work. The other branch of the autonomic nervous system is called the parasympathetic nervous system. An easy way to remember this is as rest and digest. So after you're sitting around digesting that big piece of cake you ate after you got rid of that pesky bee, that's your parasympathetic nervous system helping your stomach muscles to be able to do that. So there's just one loop and that's it? No, it's not that simple. Many pathways may be involved and lots of the parts of the brain have to work together in order to have even a simple response. So if you think about trying to hit the bee, for example, many things have to happen. While the bee flies around your head, you have to be able to keep track of where it is at any point in time. For this to happen, your eyes need to be able to follow the movement of the bee and to send that information back to your brain. For that to happen, you have to be able to pay attention to the bee, which is another part of the brain involved in that action. So even something relatively simple, like raising a fly swatter to go after a bee, means that the whole brain has to be involved. Thanks, Lindsay, for taking the time to talk to our students. It's been very helpful.